the advance and retard mechanism. That's what I intend looking at this morning. Um, it's six o'clock in the morning here, so hopefully I won't be disturbed too much by traffic or phone calls or grandchildren, hopefully, they're still in bed. So the advanced and retard mechanism, you'll see that as I move the throttle here, this lever at the front of the engine uh, moves in tandem. The two levers are cranked, are ganged together. One cannot move without the other. So now there's a few factors that affect the movement of that point in there. Uh, the first one is, of course, the, the position of the throttle. Uh, but this lever here uh, also has a bearing. You've got to make sure that this lever is the right length. The bar here uh, is adjustable. As you can see, there's a lock nut on there, and that threaded screw enables you to adjust the overall length of that bar. Now, it's quite a tricky job, and there's a lot of work in it. Um, but by playing with those parameters, you can get that movement there. Again, you can get that right. You'll notice that there's stops there. There's a stop here, and there's another stop here. So the travel there can be restricted. And also, as you know, and you'll have seen before, there are stops here. There are stops on the on the throttle itself. There's one there, and there's another one underneath here. Now, a few minutes ago, I explained to you about how the bottom half of the injector pump is known as the cam box. Well, this is the shaft that's inside the cam box. This is rotating all the time. Um, Rotating all the time with the engine is driven by the timing chain up at the front here. And I'll explain that to you in a minute. This shaft has cams on it. You can see the profile very clearly here. On top of those cams, <coughs> ride these cam followers. You'll see that wheel on there like that. So that wheel is riding on the cam there like that. And the cam follower is going up and down like that as it follows the cam. And it's that up and down motion that's injecting the diesel into the engine all the time. So at this point, maybe we should pause and we should say to ourselves, why do we want advance and retard? What, what's it all about? Now, let's remind ourselves of part of the four-stroke cycle. The piston moves down inside the cylinder and sucks air in, into the combustion chamber. And then moves up, 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 and in doing so, compresses the air inside the cylinder. It compresses it to the point where it gets very hot. And just as the piston approaches the very top, top dead center, before it approaches the top dead center, the injector sprays in diesel. Now, the air at that point is so hot that the diesel actually ignites and it, gets, it expands very, very rapidly, very high pressure, and drives the piston down to complete the cycle. So, why does the injector inject before top dead center? You'd imagine common sense would tell you that it should inject just after top dead center in order to drive the piston down. But believe it or not, <clears throat> the process is actually a burning and that burning takes time. It's not an explosion. Some people think, schoolboys might think, that it's an explosion that takes place inside the the cylinder and you can understand why they would think like that but it's not it's a burning an explosion is something that happens in an unconstrained environment it's not it's the explosion is just escaping into the air whereas in the piston inside in the cylinder 
uh, it's definitely a burning process and it takes time. So we have to inject the diesel just before top dead center in order to optimize that burning process. So where does this shaft get its drive from? Here we have an intermediary shaft. This gear here engages with the camshaft inside the timing case cover. This shaft bolts on here. Now, LW engines don't have this shaft. In LW engines, the whole injector pump is pushed forward and engages directly in, in the gears of the timing case cover. That's a disadvantage of the LW engine. This flange on here, as you'll see, has slots in it, and that enables us to rotate these two shafts relative to each other, and that helps us set up the exact timing uh, on the plungers. But we'll not go on to that at the minute. That's the subject for a future, a future video. So in summary, this gear here engages with a gear on the camshaft. So this is actually rotating quite slowly, half the, the RPM of the engine. Here, we've got the advanced and retard mechanism that you've seen earlier. This pointer moves back and forward like this, and this hook moves back and forward like this. I can't actually move it at the moment because it's, it's just too tight, and uh, I'm disinclined to dismantle it at the moment. You'll notice that hook there engages in here, like that. Do you see that? <laughs> Which means that as this moves back and forward, it moves this gear back and forward, like so. And you'll notice that the shaft has a helix on it. The lines are not straight. They actually curve along the length of the shaft. So as this moves back and forward, this gear is rotating relative to the shaft here. That means that it's rotating relative to the whole pump. The timing on the pump is changed. The point at which the diesel will be injected is changed depending on how that shaft sits, on how that gear sits. I hope you've got that. Now, that's all there is to it. It's very, very simple. It's up there, it moves back and forward. It changes the, <coughs> the uh, relative position of this shaft, and that changes the time of the, inject of the injection. It's so simple. Um, I hope you found that of interest. On we go to the next one.